All right, guys, in today's video, we're actually looking at a problem with one of our shop diagnostic tools, this GM Tech 2 uh, knockoff tool that we use a lot. And if I turn this on, I'll show you the problem. You see on some vehicles, you need to have one of these candy modules to interface the older Tech 2 technology to newer vehicles. And when this thing first comes up, it'll tell you that it's detected this candy module. In this case, we don't see that, so we know we've got this problem. And this is an intermittent problem that seems to be related to the cable itself, right? So if I can, you know, sometimes I can get it going. I don't know if we'll be able to get it going here on the camera, but sometimes you can pop this guy out. You know, what you've got going on in here is there's this piece that slides in and exposes the male terminals as they go into the females here. And then at the base in this molded area, which you can't open up, is where all the solder points are. So as you push all that together, my theory is that these guys over time, they just come loose. I'm going to go ahead and try to plug this back in, see if we got a different behavior here, just try to show it. Otherwise, you may have to wait until we repair it to see the before and after. Yeah, no, so we, we're at a point now where it's going to be failing repeatedly. So let me open this up and show you what we're going to do to fix it today. All right, so if we flip this candy module over, you can see it's just held in by four Phillips screws. So we're going to pull these four Phillips screws out. They're not in very far to begin with. And that's what we've got. So you've got a board and you've got these cables. And the cable I suspect that's at fault is this one. We never have any problem with the actual DLC adapter when we're working on older vehicles and it plugs directly into the Tech 2. We only have a problem when we have this candy module. So my theory is that we either have an issue where it plugs in here to the board or we have an issue inside of here. Either way, we can't repair anything in here. This is all soldered and molded together, so there's no way to open it up and repair it. And like I was sh showing you before, this piece here that pushes down and exposes the male pins, you know, for all we know, it pushes up against where they're soldered. We just can't see inside here and tell. The only thing we could do is we could examine this connector that goes to the circuit board and we could see if any of these are loose or damaged, but we don't see any problems with any of those. And so I believe the only fix to this is to replace this. And the fact that they offer these for sale in China uh, tells me that that is a pretty common problem. That's what we've got here. So what we've got here, you have to buy a whole set, but that gets you a new one of these connectors. And I'm betting if we plug this on, our problem will go away. So let's give that a shot and confirm that theory. So we're going to go plug this guy back in. Whoops. And this connector's keyed, so you can't screw it up. There's a little slot there and there that fits in to the socket on the board. Get that fully seated. Make sure we get this back in with the stress relief. And then we'll go ahead and put the top cover back on and we'll screw it back down. Simple enough repair. The other thing I'm noticing is these screws don't really tighten in very far and I don't want to over tighten them anymore because they're going to strip out. This one up here I think already has stripped out. Alright, but that'll be good enough for us to test this out. Yeah, so that one's already stripped out unfortunately. I'm going to have to put some epoxy or something in there to give this something to bite into. I've never opened this up before, so they just over-tightened it when they 
course manufactured it on the Chinese line. All right, let's go ahead and stick our DLC adapter back in. And let's go put it back in the vehicle and see if we get different results. All right, something else I want to show you. So if you have a hard fault, you can use a multimeter on a continuity test, right, where you get a tone. And if you got a hard fault, you can go through all of these wires and tone them out to confirm that you've got, you know, a bad harness here. Like we can start at the number here with this purple guy here. The purple actually turns out to be the center pin. Right? So we could go through and tone all these out and find the confirmed failure in here and know, okay, that's definitely what's wrong. Or similarly, we could do the same thing in this one. However, when we got an intermittent problem like we've got here, then that test is usually not going to help you, right? Because an intermittent problem, they're all going to test out until they don't. But if you do have a hard failure where it's, it's not working all the time, that can at least let you confirm which it is. And if you have a hard failure, then you also can check out another potential cause, which is on the Tech 2 itself, the main OBD2 cable that goes to the DLC, right? This is the piece that's going to connect into the candy when you remove this adapter. This here can fail too for the same reason, right? It's got that same kind of complex spring-loaded connector, and it can fail in here too. So I'll, there's, these are also available. So, you know, the things that could fail here is one of the two candy cables, the main cable from the Tech 2, and then, like I said earlier, the least likely to fail is the actual adapter. But, you know, that's a failure point, too. I would tell you that the, the order of things failing would be the candy cables, the main cable, and then the last thing possibly is the actual adapter. All right, guys, going to turn the key on, engine off. And what I did is, you know, walking over here, these screws started to fall out, so I just took them out so we don't lose them. So I went ahead and plugged it into the DLC adapter. We need to get it plugged into here. And let's power it on and see if we got different behavior now. And then I'll show you how we can fix this loose screw problem. Okay, I can see the light on. I can hear it clicking and perfect. Candy module attached. So we fixed this problem by replacing this cable. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to replace the other cable too since when you buy it they give you two and who knows this one might go next. So the only thing left I'll show you is so how can we get this to attach back with those stripped screws since the Chinese factory people stripped them out. Let's go take a look at that. All right so what are we going to do about this stripped out cover problem? All right so this is the top cover and they just use these screws into this plastic and then they're really only good for one time and then that's it you know you know what they should have had is machine screws with brass ferrules in here that would have screwed in but that's uh, not what they did so the way I'm going to fix this is we're going to use a little bit of a product called JB Weld and I'm just going to use a little bit on each one I'm not going to bore you guys with doing each one but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some of this up and then I'm going to fill it in to each of these holes and then we're going to go ahead and put the screws back in and then we'll clamp them down. So let me go ahead and get this mixed up, get a little bit in each hole, and then I'll show you how we're going to get it to set. All right, so if you zoom in here, right, we're just trying to fill this up. And when we put the screw in there, it's going to cling to the threads and basically cut itself some new threads. They're going to be a lot stronger than the original plastic by using this two-part epoxy. It's not our intent to glue this together. It's our intent to give it some, build up some material so that it has something to bite onto. I think a little bit more here, and then we'll put the cover back on. Toothpicks, I think, the best tool for this particular task. All right, so now the cover. So when we go to put this back on, you can see on these cables, there's like a flat piece, and the rest is round. The flat faces the circuit board. So we can get this flat piece on on both sides. And then you got an LED and you got a hole for the LED. Make sure you orient that. And then we can flip this over and drop these screws in here. There's really nothing for them to thread onto. You 
know, but we'll go ahead and get them swished around into the epoxy. One or two of them still have a little bit of plastic they can grab onto, which is good because that'll help us with holding this. And then I'm just going to flip this guy over. And we're going to put a couple of plastic clamps on here and let it set up for a couple hours. And we're going to have to turn it upside down or we're going to have what just happened there. But you can see we're getting the epoxy on the threads. So we're getting done what we want to have done. The only other way I could think to fix a problem like this would be to get out a plastic welder and try to build up the plastic material in there. Uh, but I think this will be fine. Alright, so we'll let this set up and we'll see if it solves this problem. Alright guys, it's actually been closer to three hours, but this should all be done now. We're just going to kind of make sure, yep, everything's holding nice and tight under pressure, trying to pull it apart. So this is done. So I wanted to show you doing this repair here because I think it's obviously going to be necessary to do the cable repair to also repair those screws. I believe the way these things were constructed, they were never designed to have you open them up and affect any kind of repair. And since this one had never been touched and fell apart so easily, I believe any of them that you open up are going to have that problem. So we've got this fixed now. I'll put a link in the video description on where you can get these replacement cables. You know, it's unfortunate that you, you can't open these up and do anything, but you can see that this type of cable is molded at the time of manufacturing, and there's just no way to open this up and effect any kind of repair in here. And when we take a look at the old ones, you know, we can see that there's no problem at all with the board side connectors, right? All of these are perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong at all. So the problem has to exist in the ends, whether it be this one, which we just replaced prophylactically, just in case it ever fails in the future, and this one, which we suspect is where the actual problem was. If you got questions, go ahead and leave them below in the comments section. I'll try to help. If you got some feedback on things you've done or maybe found other sources for these kind of problems, feel free to share it below in the comments as well. If this helps you get your Tech 2 Candy module working again on your clone setup so that you don't have these intermittent problems, appreciate you paying it forward by hitting the like button. And as always, thanks for watching.